Okay, uh, guys, I'll just repeat it uh, clear fast one time because uh, there are people on the GTM. So first of all, so first of all, I would like to show you. There are many people who even don't know how it is like. So I'll first show you how the config actually look like. So basically, you'll have Netscaler. Uh, not shared. Okay, let me share this. How to make duplicate? Right click on graphic options. Graphic options. Output to duplicate. Clone, clone this one. Okay, uh, guys, so first of all, when you are creating the wizard, okay, so best thing like for the people who don't know how to create an on Netscaler is there is a wizard already created. It's called Zenapp and Zen Desktop wizard. You'll normally select this wizard and you'll just create a new gateway. And then since we have a storefront deployment, we'll be selecting here storefront. And then you give any IP, right? Now I'll just give you the dummy IP. So therefore, the Netscaler gateway VIP, wherever you are trying to connect, I already have, so I'm just giving any dummy IP here, but this should be the IP to which clients are actually connecting. Oh, this one, I, same IP I have already. And then you'll just select the certificate, what you want. This should match to, to the FQDN of the Netscaler gateway VIP, where you want to connect. And then as Devind explained, we should have a LDAP who is able to contact the server and get to know if the credentials are fine or not. So I'll just give you LDAP here. And then comes the storefront part. Here normally you'll just give the storefront FQDN. Whatever is your score, uh, storefront FQDN like sf.example.com. And then your store name. And then your domain. And then the IP address, which you need to give to the storefront. Okay, then you'll give to uh, the storefront server where you want to communicate and what it is communicating. Normally storefront is on SSL or HTTP, whichever you need, you'll just do that. And if it is load balance or net scaler, you select load balance and give the virtual server IP, whichever you need. And after that, I have missed STA. Yeah. And you should have the STA server IP. So as you can see, this is quite easy to configure. Once you'll do all this step, Zen farm, I don't have a Zen farm. I'll just select it. If you'll notice, automatically a Netscaler gateway will be created. You see this test one. If I'll go under the Netscaler gateway, the name will always start with underscore XT underscore test. If I'll edit this one, you'll notice that everything has been created. 1.12.1, the IP to which the client will communicate. This will be the Netscaler public IP. And then the cipher and best thing where people get confused are the session policies. Even the session policies will be created automatically for the client, like how they can connect. With all the details of storefront, this single sign on domain and all. So this is the Netscaler. Netscaler, I would suggest whenever you are creating, create it using a wizard. So you'll not miss any single step here. Session profile basically. 
other interests. I thought you were explaining. I explained, right? Okay, okay. So that is there. Now coming to store fund. Normally, you should know how store fund is configured. That part is like out of scope for this session. I'll just tell you with NetScaler when it's there. You will normally create a store. Only the extra setting which is required for NetScaler when it's connected with NetScaler is you'll create a NetScaler gateway and then you'll give the name of the NetScaler gateway. This should resolve to the NetScaler gateway IP on the NetScaler. HTTPS NS storefront sf.emia.in should resolve to the IP address which is given on the NetScaler web. And second, logon type whichever you need and call callback URL. This is optional. Like if you won't give also, it's like an extra check. I'll explain you later on this. So we'll just create a NetScaler gateway and you'll create a STA ticket. If you see, I have created one as 10.107.99.149. This should exactly match with the NetScaler STA. Okay, because STA is something I'll explain to you later, like why it's useful, but this should exactly match with NetScaler. If you have different STA, your app will be displayed, but launching will not work. And after this, once you create this NetScaler gateway, you'll come to the stores. And in the enable remote access, you'll just select the store that NetScaler gateway you have created. So this is the storefront part you normally do with respect to NetScaler. Now coming to that packet flow one more time for GTM people, I'll just explain you how exactly it's happening. So first of all, right now, I'm going to my NetScaler gateway. Okay, first time, I'm just entering the URL. So this is my NetScaler gateway URL page, username and password. Now, till here, the page you are noticing, if I go via the slide again, till here, this is the user. I just connected to NetScaler and NetScaler till now, NetScaler don't know who am I. So it needs to validate whether I am a correct user or not. So till here, this is the part what is done. And that's what we are noticing. Now what happened is I'll enter my username and credential. I went to store fund. In looking, it looks very simple, like it happened within a microsecond, but actually many steps are involved here. So I'll just explain you. So after I enter the credential, my NetScaler actually contacted the LDAP server here and LDAP server validated whether the user is correct or not and it sent a 200 OK saying yes, the user is fine. When user is correct with respect to NetScaler, then NetScaler actually just, this, these things are explained by Devin already that it will set it to the client ICA mode and after this, NetScaler based on that session profile we have created, we have given their store fund URL that it should contact slash Citrix slash NSG web, that session profile using wizard which we created. Based on that, my NetScaler actually sent a request to the storefront asking that a user wants to log in. And then what Citrix storefront will say, it will tell. The storefront also has many login forms like domain based and different, different forms. So NetScaler uh, storefront actually tells him that these are the authentication method which I support. I'll show you these things in trace afterwards. So it will show this. After this, NetScaler just uh, requests for the gateway auth login. This is just for the packet flow. And basically storefront challenge for a 401 asking who is the user who want to access the resources. I need to know. And NetScaler since already in the LDAP we have given the credential, it caches the credential. And using same credential, it will just pass it to the storefront. Now, when it uh, goes to the storefront, then storefront again contact XML broker or if XML is installed within the storefront, it directly contacts the LDAP if you see on the top. It goes there using the same credential saying, is it a valid user? LDAP again says, yes, the credential are fine and all, and it just send it back to the storefront. And after this, storefront does it part that it sends a 200 OK, 
and it sets a cookie exactly to know that tell the user that yes he is authenticated next time you just come with these cookies to me and i'll understand that you are already authenticated after this the user want to know what are the resources which he should access like normally like if you go to this page you see these are the resources i have mozilla firefox one command prompt and one notepad too so this exactly what resources are allowed to me for this basically the next killer will ask what are the resources which are assigned to me which i can see so after this before do, giving him the resources what storefront do do if you have configured callback if you have not configured callback on storefront this thing doesn't happen but since we have configured a callback url so it do an extra check to make sure that this user is not coming to me directly but he's already authenticated on the next killer gateway so it's like a double check to avoid any like security risk or something because it might happen that i have the credential i hack the credential in the meantime and i continue the same session so storefront needs to make sure that connection is external and user is already authenticated on the netscaler gateway it does a call back to the netscaler and to this call back netscaler sends back the uh, let me complete the flow okay so after this when the call back is complete netscaler sends a 200 okay saying this is the username password and after that once that is coming uh, everything is done then again the storefront contacts the xml for the app list for this user like how this app list should be displayed correct correct exactly correct why callback happen to the next killer because in storefront the way where you have configured you have given callback you are this next killer gateway fqdn so after this the app list is provided in xml format and web page you will just see this so this is till here the thing you are noticing is this part okay and once the resource list are given to you storefront rules and say after this storefront just goes to sleep mode he don't want to do anything because his part is done to give the apps to the user now comes the next part like uh, let's say i'm clicking on this app notepad 2 now i want to launch this app you can see in the down this one file is downloaded on my pc and once and this is called ica file once i'll click on this file my citrix receiver should kick in and you see the notepad 2 is starting and this is called the app launch like app is launched so now coming to this flow as you see the i clicked on the icon to which i want and after clicking the icon the storefront contacted the xml okay okay uh, i have shown you the further one slide is still little behind okay so till app it's fine and sta and ip those part uh, they been already covered but just for your reference sta rules comes here is my user should get to know which zenapp server i should go for fetching this app because you will be having 10 or 20 zenapp servers so what happened this time is let's say my zenapp server ip is 10.1.1.1 but what happen if i am an internal user i can access zenapp directly i can just when my client is trying to access a zenapp 10.1.1 is within my domain i'll just contact it over 1494 but this sta process only happens via netscaler because when netscaler comes into the picture client is always external let's say i am in external network i am sitting at my home if storefront will tell me to connect to 10.1.1 i will not be able to connect because it's a private ip address i cannot connect to that over an external network so to do that we have came up with this deployment where what happen is before giving the ip to the client the storefront server actually contact the sta server and sta server is nothing but the server which has only two thing in its data list one a ticket and one the ip address of the zenapp server so here exactly what happened is since storefront can't give the ip to the client because 
client is coming over external store fund goes to the sta server and tells sta that okay i am going to give this ip to a client can you give me a ticket for this let's say the ticket then what happen sta server will just give a ticket and that ticket will be let's say it's abc so what it will do it will just give abc to the store fund server and it in its own database it will just get an entry saying abc equal to 10.1.1.1 just for future reference i'll tell you where it will come into picture and then this ticket will be embedded in the ica launch file store fund will do in the ica launch file this ticket and then it will pass it to the client now once this file is received on the client what happens is uh, this store fund will uh, no store fund will end here now what happened the client comes as you saw the file is downloaded on my pc if i'll just open you the file uh, let me download it again Okay, I'm not able to open. Huh? No, I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Okay. 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 Correct. You see, this was the file. I'll just edit it in Notepad. So, if you notice, this is the file what Storefront gave to me as a client. The main thing which you need to concentrate on this file is. the sta ticket if you'll see exactly this address was actually the ip address of the zenap server but what storefront did it just embedded it with the token it got like the abc token i said it gets replaced with that token and second main thing it says is ssl proxy the address to which it need to connect i'm not able to find where is that okay here it is So if you'll see, so what it told my client that for further communication, just connect to nssf.emia.in, which is my NetScaler gateway web. Now what happened? Once the user open it, like I open this file, my connection will come to nssf.emia.in, what which is my NetScaler. And after this, how NetScaler will do the further thing? The further when once the NetScaler will uh, this file will come till the NetScaler. netscaler will just see the ticket from this file and based on that ticket it will get to know that this file needs to contact a zenap server which even i don't know who that guy is so that's why i told you right sta should be same now netscaler will have an sta server configured it will contact that sta server and it will tell him that okay one user came to me with a token name abc and he needs to connect to an ip tell me what is that ip Now what happen? ST server will have in its database that ABC is equal to 10.1.1.1. This one will just give that IP address to NetScaler. So now NetScaler will get to know that the client session I have to send it to 10.1.1.1. So this is what happen with the ST server. NetScaler contact the ST server, get the IP address of the Zenap, and after that it will just contact the Zenap server directly. And then you will see that application launch and all the data. so guys this is the flow basically mm -hmm. correct it will launch but basically your zenap server will deny it yeah because netscaler don't have uh, that much way of checking inside the ica file you can modify it but later the zenap server do that part it gets to know that because basically i'll show you netscaler passes the client ip as well to the zenap server in xml so if you try to if from the same pc you try and give the same ip there are chances that you might get connected no netscaler netscaler client connected to netscaler so netscaler knows that this is the client ip Okay, guys. So this maybe some confusion. So I'll I'll just explain you in the troubleshooting one. What is the flow? 
So this is kind of advanced troubleshooting. I'm going to show you because packet flow you'll get to know many places. Now or afterwards? Now? After three. Okay, time. Okay. So guys, so guys, this is kind of like the basic flow which you should know while troubleshooting the problem basically because you get to know where is the problem. Zenap guys can see this flow and they can tell okay problem is on the Netscaler side because we are not getting this itself. And Netscaler guys can also find out the same thing that this response is not coming from storefront. So since we all are like tech support guys, we troubleshoot based on Wireshark or packet flow. So I'll just show you how the packet flow looks like exactly in the Wireshark. So you guys will be able to understand while you are troubleshooting the issue. So first of all, while troubleshooting, these are some of the tips. Okay. Like the first one, if you don't know how to create on Netscaler configuration, you have any simple doubt that ICA proxy should be on on Netscaler gateway or something, any minimal doubt you have, then the best way is you create it using wizard, which I showed you guys. That is like the best way. And also, Correct. That's the like he said. Like I created one dummy one, right? Just create a dummy one. Verify the gun if they are exactly fine or not. This is basically for Netscaler guys. Okay. Now, second thing is for this communication. Always remember there should not be any certificate warning anytime when you are connecting to Netscaler gateway or storefront because Netscaler is very strict. On a PC, you might get a warning saying. CA is unknown add ex exception or allow this. But if Netscaler is sending to someone and it gets a uh, CA problem, it will just reject the SSL. It will never give you from nothing. So that's why it's best that you always have the certificate fine. And to check the certificate, the best way you always have is on the storefront. Just open a browser and just connect to your Netscaler gateway. This is the first thing you should always do for storefront whenever you want to make sure because what happens when you are connected to using an internet explorer there are many things you will solve one thing i didn't see any certificate issue that means when my storefront is contacting this guy there is no certificate problem second you can have many other things that nssf.emia.in dns entry is correct there is no problem in the dns and there is one more thing, Netscaler also contacts storefront. So Netscaler should have the CA of storefront. That you cannot check like here. You should manually have the CA of the storefront server on the Netscaler. Okay. Yeah. So you solved your port problem also. So that's why this is the best test you should always do. From storefront opening this. And this thing is after entering the credential in Netscaler gateway login page check if user is authenticated or not. This is again for Netscaler people like when they are entering the credential right. They should get to know that okay credential didn't fail. Because you saw that right once I log in I got the application so many things happen in between that. So first thing to check is whether my credential are correct or not. Now how to check credential in the Netscaler trace. If you'll take a trace, you will just see a post slash CGI slash login during the login. Here you will notice the credential actually entered by the user. Like you see downwards here, the credential what I entered can be seen in the Netscaler trace. And after this post, I should see a 200 OK. From the next killer, which means credential are fine. If you don't see, you see a 401 unauthorized means credential are not correct. Now, once the credential are fine, coming to the same packet flow which we discussed, you can see whatever the store name web uh, store name will be there, right? Netscaler will send a get request to that store web. 
and here how storefront and zenab gets to know the ip address of the actual client you can see here when the first get is sent from the netscaler subnet ip to the storefront netscaler always include three header there you see xtrix via nssf.emia.in this is the fqdn of netscaler gateway then xtrix via web this is the ip address so nssf ip address is this 10107991 and x forwarded for is the client ip 1008.41 this is my client with which i accessed so here actually netscaler tells the storefront that this is the details and uh, that's how even the zenapp server and all get to know xml basically that this is the client that's why if you try to launch same ica file on any other pc it won't work because your pc ip will be changed now uh, in this, uh, just show you. Mm. Storefront also, if you just see authentication, yeah. You see normally what method configured on storefront. You see username and password, domain pass through, pass through from Netscaler. So before doing a SSO like Netscaler connected, actually Netscaler get checks with the storefront. What are the authentication method enabled on you? So that's what you'll see in this request. That uh, this is that I can't. That post slash Citrix authentication get out method it sent to the storefront, and storefront replied with the 200 OK with all the login, explicit auth login, Citrix auth login, and gateway auth login, whatever is enabled. What happened to this? Uh, On the net scaler. Yeah. Uh, we just start the test, it captures all the Okay, now this is where the SSO part will happen. You basically notice that then Netscaler first will send a post. Uh, first of all, Netscaler will send this Citrix NSG gateway auth login. It will try to log into the storefront. And then Netscaler uh, storefront will send a 401 with following thing required. Password required, yes, that I need you to authenticate on me. After this, you will see that Netscaler will actually send a post request I'll just show you in the next one after this what will happen since netscaler already have the username password which user entered it will cache it and after this it will just send the same username and password to the storefront if you see here Citrix ag basic username this is actually encoded in base 64 format so sometimes let's say you are troubleshooting and you see that you uh, netscaler is doing a post 401 is coming coming store for not accepting again post 401 that means sso is failing and you have taken a trace and you want to validate whether this username domain is correct or not so i'll just show you that first catch this post request just see the username if you see it's zm fya gfu then go to any base 64 site Here you will just enter that name. What's them? ZM FYA. ZM FYA. 
six feet. Okay. GFU, GFU. You see, it decoded to Farhan, the username I entered. So similar way, you can collect a trace and you can use any base 64 decoder and you can decode all three of them one by one. That whether the username is correct, domain is correct, even password you can decrypt. And session ID is something which Netscaler creates a session ID and it sends to the storefront. This will be useful when Nets, uh, storefront does a callback. And after this, if the credential are fine, you'll see a 200 OK from storefront with the status success. Success with authentication type AG basic. And after this, if callback is configured, you'll see one extra request coming to the Netscaler gateway from storefront. And you see this post request is coming from storefront to the Netscaler gateway web, not to the SNP address or something. It's exactly coming to the Netscaler gateway web address, which is NSSF. And here you see the same session ID, username, domain. It will we'll just check whether this thing exists on you or not. The same session, if you see the session D2F398, it will be the same session ID if I decrypt this AG session ID. So it just verify if this user is authenticated on you or not. If yes, then you will see a Netscaler gateway response to callback like this 200 OK. And as I highlighted, status code 0 is here. So 0 means success. If it gets failed, you'll see other status code like one fail and all. And other thing you can see here is success and even the client address is again given 10.108.41 farm name XT storefront. This is the farm name which I have given in the Netscaler gateway name. Basically it will be done. And the farm ID. This is Netscaler gateway whip and this is the session profile which got hit for this user PLWB underscore. After the callback. Netscaler uh, storefront will normally just set a cookie set cookie CTX auth ID. This is like a cookie which storefront sets to the user once it's authenticated. That means further request if this cookie is coming storefront will not ask for authentication. It will think this user is a proper user. So it just sets a cookie this one and it sends a status result as success. Now, once the callback uh, is done, SSO is happen happened and all, then what happened? That client will request for the resource list as you see. And now the storefront actually contact the XML broker. And here you see how it contacts is it sends a post slash script slash WPNBR.DLL to XML broker. And here you can see it actually send with my username Farhan Citrix123 my domain. And rest other uh, things and all. Storefront trace, not on the next killer. And here in the response, like XML, you know, then XML will contact LDAP, check if this Farhan Citrix123 is correct or not. Then it sends a resource list of this user. And in the 200 OK, you can see the app name. You can see Internet Explorer, Notepad2, and all the apps. I have not copied the entire data, the main part. So you can just see this application list which you see for the user. You'll just see in the 200 OK. And this same 200 OK will send to the storefront and storefront to Net Netscaler and Netscaler to the client. And after this, if you notice this 200 OK will have the ICA file created for that one, like the name of the ICA file. And the string name like that you'll see for everything notepad to internet command prompt and everything and this means when I click on that icon then actually this slash launch icon slash this name will come to the next color that means the user requested for this one file name, file name. Correct. so everything will be sent in the 200 okay and this was actually done by XML And after this, as you see, once I click on the application, you'll see this request Citrix AGSF web resource launch ICA, that same ICA name, gfkmg.ica. It will come from Netscaler to uh, client to the Netscaler.
and you see in the west okay this part i'll show you once this launch.ik came to the netscaler like you have clicked to the app then you see again one more post slash scripts wpn br from storefront to xml this again you will notice on the storefront trace not on netscaler here you will again see that storefront will tell the XML that the user Farhan from EMEA domain has asked for Notepad2 app. And after this, what happened is you just see XML server will just respond with the Zenapp server. You see my Zenapp server is 10.104.23.149 on 1494. So XML server has given the Zenapp IP right now here. If session reliability is enabled, then you'll see 2598. Once this file is received on the storefront, then storefront will ask for the STA ticket using the post scripts ctxta.dl saying to the STA that this is the Zenapp IP. I need a ticket for this. You can see this request in those requests. Normally, STA, how you get to know it's a request responses, as Basav said, request ticket. And in other requests, it will be response. And here you see the STA gave back the ticket for that IP. It noted out that IP in the database and it gives a ticket called this one 08328C. And this STA EDFD you are seeing, this is the STA ID. This also I'll tell you how this thing plays a role. So this is the STA ID. And this is the ticket which ST server gave to storefront. And after this, storefront will create an ICA file. And if you can see the things noted here, the main point, you should see in an ICA file. First, the application name, which I click notepad.2. Then the ticket number that storefronts get from XML broker during this. And the SSL proxy tells the receiver where to initiate the SSL connection to. And normally, when this file is sent to the client, in Netscaler trace also you see, because storefront will pass this ICA file to the Netscaler. So Netscaler, when you actually do launch.ICA, you'll see a 200 OK with application X ICA. This file, if you'll just right click, export packet byte, you'll see an ICA file here. You can save it as a text file. And here I just saved that file. If you'll just open that file, Okay, this is in full screen. So this is that ICA file, if you guys will see, which the storefront exactly sent. So here yeah, basically you'll notice the notepad too, and then you'll see the STA ticket, STA ID, and other things. Now, once the file is given to the client, the storefront rules end save. Because storefront part is done, the apps are given to the uh, client and client has clicked on the app. So that part is done. Now what happens is, after receiving the ICA file, client will initiate a new SSL handshake here. So you can see the 200 OK. okay my screen is different. Hmm. I don't know why this thing is happening. Output two. Okay. So you see this 200. Okay. This is the ICA file I got. And after getting that ICA file, the client actually created a new connection to Netscaler Gateway Web. You'll see the SSL handshake. And here you'll see that same STA ID. You see STA ED EV 25 BD and the STA ticket. So now I'll tell you why this ID is actually important. So what happened in normally case? If you go to the Netscaler. Netscaler normally customer will have multiple STA server. Let's say I have three STA server on my Netscaler. 
So when this ticket comes to the Netscaler, how Netscaler will identify which STI should go? Because that's a very common problem we have noticed. That it will go to some wrong STA ticket for asking for the IP address of the uh, Zenapp server. But since that STA don't have that IP address, obviously it won't respond. It will either respond with a 500 or not found. So basically, every STA when you configure on the Netscaler, you see one ID here. You see STA ED BD5 ABD. So every STA will have a unique STA ID. So when this ticket comes, then based on this STA ID, the Netscaler decides which STA ID I should go for this ticket. So this one, it will get to know that okay, this ID is actually 10107.99.149. And then in the next request, it will send a post to this ID with this ticket number. So here you can see based on STID, Netscaler will identify what is the STA server to which it should contact. It sends a post to that STA server asking that this is the ticket number. I need the IP for this. And for this, you'll see a 200 OK response from the STA server. Like you can basically see 10107.99.149. This is the Zenapp server IP. So this IP will be given by the STA server to the Netscaler. And after this, Netscaler would directly connect to this. After you, if you see this 200, okay, it got the IP, then 132 to 149. This is my Zen app. Netscaler creates a new connection to the ICA session to the actual Zen app server. And from here, the Zen app ICA connection starts on port 1494. You see the port number here, 1494. It starts. And again, one thing, client will come till 443 only. Till Netscaler, it will be SSL. From Netscaler to the Zen app, it will be 1494. And many times when you notice a problem that your app enumeration is fine, but launching is the problem. One is ST, obviously, because Netscaler was not able to identify which Zen app I should go. And the second one is from Netscaler to that Zen app, either port 1494 or 2598 was not open. That again, you can only identify on Netscaler twice. You'll see a sin going, but no response coming. So you'll get to know that this port is blocked. And how to know if STA mismatch is there? Because in STA 200, okay, you will not see this IP. You'll see some message here that could not find this or something like that. And no ICA connection. So guys, this is like the session. I think we finished. Any question you guys have? You had one question, right? Correct. Uh, that is Netscaler design. It will be global. You give any dummy IP address there. Only Netscaler should have that session ID. As you saw, it will come with that session ID. It will just validate if that session ID exists on Netscaler. What is the username? Even if LB that session ID is, let's say you didn't even log into Netscaler Gateway, you logged into LB AAA. But some way, if you can manipulate the packet, you come, Netscaler will still allow. It will think, just see the session ID. Correct. So that callback is checking if it has a valid session. So, yeah, so that is fully global, not specific to Gateway. So guys, one more thing I'll tell you as the question out. Normally what happens is this callback happens, right? So many times what customer do is they'll have a Netscaler gateway. Netscaler gateway, they'll enable the client certificate authentication. Where the client need to authenticate using a certificate. So let's say I'm a client, I have a PC, I'll connect to Netscaler gateway. He'll ask me for a certificate. I'll just select a certificate and give it to him. But in that scenario, what happens is first part will be fine. But when storefront does a callback, storefront is not a human being like me. He don't know what is cert. Netscaler don't know it's coming from storefront. It will again ask for a client cert form to him. And since storefront cannot give anything, so it will fail. The callback will fail and the session SSO everything will fail. 
सो टू अवॉइड दिस थिंग हाँ दैट्स वॉट लेट लेट मी कंप्लीट सो ओके सो दैट दैट्स वॉट द प्रॉब्लम इट विल हैपन सो टू अवॉइड दैट वॉट कस्टमर डू इज दे नॉर्मली मेक द नेट स्किलर गेट वे द सेम वे ओनली ड्यूरिंग अ कॉल बैक राइट they give a dummy ip there like what they do is uh, i'll just show you basically the dummy is that you don't find any certificate so you see here in the call back i have given nssf.email.in which is my actual netskiller gateway during that time what let's say i have a client cert enabled here so what will happen my authentication will fail because the call back time i cannot get the client cert so i'll keep the same setup just i'll create one more thing called nssf1 or 1 2 3 any dummy thing here i'll just give it and then using this same name i'll create a dummy web on the netskiller gateway like one more netskiller gateway where i'll not have anything no client cert nothing so what happen first communication will happen on the actual access gateway netskiller gateway it will go to the storefront fine when storefront does a call back using this thing it goes to the second web and second whip will just see the session not no client cert is there on the second whip it will just see yes session is there it will send a 200 okay so that's why this call back is actually optional if you'll notice this is not something which is mandatory just for extra check some customer do it open the access स्टोफन customer will do primary is client server dot and secondary is ldap server because storefront need a username password for someone to log in it needs domain username and password for the user to get logged in so if next killer you will only have client certificate it will not work you need to have client cert plus ldap both so that next killer can pass the credentials so basically the Uh, right. Same process will follow, except the callback part will be omitted. Ah, done. So that just answer. Even I am not sure what why full tunnel and no. is something i uh, even i would say it's a big topic stuff and if you know just a basic understanding uh, beacon is basically for the user to client normally what happens is i have i'm coming to office i'm connecting to let's say my local stuff same is accessible over internet as well so it's just like external check where customer don't want that much uh, what to say load to change the url every time that for internal i should connect internal.citrix.com for external i should connect external they want just a single url 
but they want net scaler or something to identify if they are internal or external internal external i mean directly contact store fund access the app if you are internal external means via net scaler gateway so what happens is once you and this thing is only via citrix receiver you cannot achieve this via web browser or something so over receiver when you access this data on store fund normally you specify something called beacons so let's say if you see here i have internal and external let's say i am internal to the network but i accidentally connected to nssf.emia.in the moment i log into netscaler netscaler contact the store fund one packet will be sent called store discovery where exactly we discover whether it's internal or external that time what happen is this store fund sends this this url sf.emia.in and nssf to me on my client machine my client machine will try to do a dns resolution for sf.emia.in if it's successful it get to know that okay i am in the same domain because i am able to resolve this time and then it will just change that it will like switch to sf.emia.in and directly store fund it will go and work so no sta will be there no yeah. sta will be there it will be like directly so basically that's why we always make sure beacon is correct because many times customer comes they say receiver they are not able to contact even in my pc also one day i struggled for 2 hours because in my pc i have given a host entry for sf.emia.in so what happens is i am actually connecting externally i am not able to i am not in internal network but by mistake my pc is able to resolve this internal beacon so what happen i'll connect to netscaler store fund will say okay you are in my network connect directly but since i am external i cannot connect directly so it will just fail again and again so during that time it's always recommended that when you are external the internal thing should not be resolved resolve means not ping it should not be resolved itself fqdn should not get resolved by your dns server or you should not have a manual host entry on your pc that is like an extra layer in callback you are doing but store fund has the credential already if you see the 401 is not there no need for dummy web okay yeah even i have checked if i remove callback same setup works fine because i will not even do a callback i you see this slide right i have the username password see basically what happened I 
part of it in some two days. Of course, it's not supported there. Uh, I think when they went to support the government, definitely I think they will be supporting the back end of the other side around the software. Yeah, then you need LDAP. You can't do anything. Alright, so another point is that the company is going to the only communication between storefront and NetScaler Gateway VIP is the callback. If you leave that blank, that won't happen. Then it's only one way, full. No, no, that will be already authenticated with them. They only check the source IP. Zenap and Zendesktop don't do any kind of authentication. If they do, the setup will not work. <laughs> It will work. It's, even with that, it will work. Hey, I can't be here. No, it's only. Not for the. Use the issue. LB. Use it. Lagaya hua tha next killer gate pe pe and that was causing issue. Ha, STA ke liye kabi. Ha, kabi use it is only supported for STA and these things uh, till now, not for ICA. Hmm, next color gateway, there is no option.